These five chefs are all hoping to become the next professional MasterChef champion. Today, they face their first challenge. Three tests set by chef Monica Galetti, seasoned diner Greg Wallace, and two Michelin-starred British chef Marcus Waring. I'm excited to be hearing from Marcus Waring because he's up there with one of my top five idol chefs and to cook for him is like one in a million opportunity. I'm in it to win it. I'm here to show that I'm one of the best in the country. I am competitive. At the end of the day, I'm doing what I love. And I think if I do that, it should get me to the final. Only the best will make it through to the quarter final. We're looking for passion, we're looking for skill. But under the pressure of this competition, we've seen many a chef crack. Chefs, welcome to Professional MasterChef. You are now cooking your own dish, your signature dish. And that dish has to impress the chefs either side of me. What a great way to introduce yourselves to us. Please, show off what you can do. Stand out. Try and just enjoy the fastest hour that will go by in your life. <laughs> and it goes like that. One of you is going to leave the competition at the end of this round. You know what you got to do? Deliver. One hour. Let's go. At the moment, I'm working in a big hotel just outside of Plymouth. Half of the building's a restaurant, the other half's a brasserie. I've been here 12 months and just recently I took over as head chef. Being a head chef at the age of 23, it's a lot of hard work, but I love it. I live, eat and sleep catering, so it's all I've ever done. I've been doing it now since I was like 12. And I'm definitely where I want to be. Jamie, tell me, what are you cooking? I'm doing a roast turbot with king hand dyed scallops, a pancetta girole and potato risotto with a char-grilled asparagus and asparagus for lute. Wow, that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. Jamie, is this a dish that you do? Yeah, it's one I've got on where I work at the moment. It is? Yeah. So you've, you're completely in tune with what it is you're yeah, doing? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, this dish normally comes with about five, six, seven, eight other chefs that help you along the way, yeah. from the service point of view. Yeah, yeah. I've practised and practised it, so hopefully I can pull it off. Explain to me, out of all the dishes you could have done, yeah. why did you pick that? To impress. Um, I didn't want to cook my best dishes first. So this is, <laughs> now I'm not saying that this isn't a good one, but I've just like tried to balance it out. You know. Jamie, why are you mugging me off with the second best dish? <laughs> I'm not. You'll get to eat my best food, hopefully, further on in the competition. That is a very, very interesting approach. A risky one. Yeah. Because you could go home today thinking. I know. I know, but oh. you know, I didn't want to cook my best I like dishes that. first. I think yeah. that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well done. Well, Thanks, Joe. Uh, Anything thank else, Chef? <laughs> no, no, no. Thanks, Joe. Heads down. You yeah, got lots cheers. Of thank you. Young Jamie, roast turbot, scallops, and potato risotto. Risotto is normally rice. I'm always keen to learn new tricks of the trade. I'm curious how I have this is going to turn out today. He's got some beautiful ingredients, but it does sound like to me he's got quite a lot going on there. I'm head chef of a restaurant in Leicestershire with the ethos on British food done well. I started in kitchens when I was 15, working as pot washing and like everyone does. I'm here from dawn till dusk. I love what I do. I'll never have a bad word to say about it. My wife might, but I won't. <laughs> you all right, Sam? Yes, fine, thank you. How does it feel to be here? Good and challenging. It's exciting. You sure about that? Yeah, it's nice. It's good. Okay, I'm so what are you making it. for us? Uh, today we're doing beef with broccoli, peanuts and blue cheese. So classic flavours, combinations. Classic flavours? I've actually not had peanuts with beef before. No. 
Peanuts and beef is Chinese. This is a British version of this dish. You've got less ingredients on your bench than anybody else? Yeah, I noticed that as well. So. What does that say about you? It says that I just want to showcase flavour. Flavours, textures and taste. Why is that beef in the water? It's, it's brining. a brining. It's a flat iron beef. It's the confidence that I have as a chef to showcase cooking ability and skill, take a lesser cut of meat that people don't know about and put it into a dish. Thank you, Sam. Good luck. Thank you. A flat iron steak is taken from a working joint of the beef, so it can be tough. Sam is brining the steak, which means it's in a solution to salt it and tenderise the, the meat as well. It needs to be cooked correctly and rested very well. To me, Sam's taken a massive gamble here with very little on the plate. He's really relying on the quality of his ingredients. You've had 20 minutes. I work at a four-star hotel in Edinburgh. I've got a very popular restaurant. It does 120 covers per service. I just love the buzz about every day's different. I just like coming in, getting my chef lights on and getting stuck in. In my background, I've worked in three five-star hotels in Edinburgh. Service, please. Would like to move into the restaurant scene. In time, would like to get my own kitchen and make a name for myself. John, you well? I'm very well. Yourself? Good, good, good. Um, please tell me, what are you cooking for us? I'm doing um, seared venison loin. Yep. I'm making a mini sausage with red chicken and the black Scotch pudding. Yep. And I'm going to do a cox apple jus, parsnip and vanilla puree, yep. and braised red cabbage. Why did you choose this? I find that this, this is me on a plate, yep. what, I, what I normally do, and it's what I want to try and show you is what I can do. And I think there's a good technical skill as well involved for you to judge me on as well, so... What's going to make you stand out from the crowd? Hopefully, you like my food. Good man. I'll be fine. We'll let you crack on. OK, thank Thanks, you. John. John from Scotland is cooking us a loin of venison. He's making a boudin with some black pudding, which sounds delicious, and then a parsnip and vanilla puree. It was sounding all right until we got to the vanilla bit. Vanilla, I am not too sure about that. That concerns me. It's almost a step too far. At the moment, I'm working in the prestigious music and drama venue in Cardiff. My role here is head chef. I started off at gastronomic catering service, went on to four-star hotels, and then made my way up to a Michelin star restaurant in Barcelona. Since I've left culinary school, it's about five, six years ago, I can say I'm really happy with where I am and what I've achieved. Service, please. I have done, I think, more than some people have in the whole of their career. Mark, you look like you've got a lot going on on your bench. I have, yeah. <laughs> First of all, tell me what you're doing. Um, I'm doing a wrap saddle of rabbit with croquettes that have been made from the leg, black pudding and potato. Then that's laying on a bed of parsley puree finished with the rabbit jew. You've got a lot going on there. I have. i really got to get, get my head down and... Did you say you, you've been working in Spain? I have, yeah. I've lived there for 16 years. Have you? Yeah. I got 15 years in Valencia, on the outskirts, and then a year in Barcelona. But you're Welsh, right? I'm Welsh, yeah. <laughs> from where? On the outskirts of Ponte Prith. So, from South Wales to Valencia to the MasterChef kitchen? Yes. So, wh where, where's your journey going? I don't know. <laughs> don't know where it's going to end, either. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be a... Uh, down the line, I'll be able to stay and, and show you what I can cook and hopefully Great you enjoy stuff. it. We'll let you carry on. Yes, we'll let you crack on. Thank you very much. Mark is doing rabbit. He's stuffing it. He's doing little croquettes. He's pressure cooking the bones of the rabbit to really enhance the flavours of his sauce. I love rabbit. It's a meat that needs to rest properly once it's cooked. In an hour, I hope he does it justice. If he could pull this off, it could be a cracking dish. You've only got 20 minutes left. I work at uh, one of London's top five-star hotels. I'm a sous chef and I've worked here for coming on six years. I love it here. It's very busy and very demanding. There's a lot of pressure to make sure 100% of the people leave completely satisfied. That's what I strive to do. I just want to cook something that people will love at the end of the day. 
You all right, Sven? Good morning, yeah. So what are you doing for us? Turbot poached in seaweed butter with cauliflower puree, roasted cauliflower, hazelnuts and an oyster sauce with some pickles as well. Can I let you into a secret? I think it sounds fantastic. How into food are you? I love it. It's everything I do. I, if I'm not cooking, I'm probably eating. Do you take yourself out? I do, yeah. That's uh, pretty much what I spend all my money on, going to restaurants and uh, seeing what's out there, travelling around the world, eating. Cheers, mate. No problem. Thank you. Sven is cooking us a turbot dish, which he's poaching in seaweed butter. He's serving it with the sauce made from the juices of the mussels, with some roasted cauliflower and hazelnuts. I love the sound of that. You want to taste the cauliflower, you want to taste the fish, you want to taste the mussels, and you want to taste the seaweed. The balance is what we're looking for. And that will determine how good a chef he really is. Five minutes left. You've got to start thinking about plating up. Loving the effort, but you've got to get it done on time. You've got 60 seconds. That's what you've got. Jamie, would you bring your plate up, please? Twenty-three-year-old head chef Jamie has made a signature dish of girol and pancetta potato risotto, topped with charred asparagus, roast turbot and scallops, and finished with an asparagus foam. Are you pleased? Yeah, I'm pleased. Yeah? Anything you'd like to change? No. I like it, but I don't like that you called it a risotto. Mm. If anything, it's more a potato and mushroom ragu. Right, yeah. OK? Yeah. But you've got bags of flavour in there. The scallops, they cook perfectly for me. The only letdown I have, I don't get anything from this foam on the top. You know, I like the flavours that you've achieved on your dish, which for me shows you can cook. Yeah. The textures are interesting. The asparagus is cooked really well. The fish is cooked really nicely. I like the idea of what it is you're trying to achieve here by recreating risotto with potato, but you're trying too hard. For me, it's just not quite working as a dish, unfortunately. Yeah. You've got some really big flavour in what you call that risotto, really big flavour. And the texture of your fish is, is very good indeed. Jamie, I think you might have just be going one step too far. Thank you, Jamie. Cheers. I am quite happy, yeah. I'm just glad it's sort of over. That was a lot of pressure. Probably the most pressure I've ever had in my whole career. Edinburgh chef John has made seared venison loin on a bed of braised red cabbage with a venison and black pudding sausage served with carrots, cubed parsnips, a parsnip and vanilla puree and an apple jus. It's nice and clean, very simple, nice colours. It's a very nice plate of food. I like it. I think it's very smart indeed. Mate, your venison is soft. I, lo I love the boudin with the black pudding going through it. I love the sauce. You've, you've got sweetness throughout without being oversweet. I particularly like those little droplets of parsnip and vanilla. The red cabbage got a nice finish, but it's a little sweet. Apart from that, I think it's delicious. Your venison is, is cooked how I would prefer it. I love it like that. I like the flavours of the black pudding coming through the boudin. It's a nice idea. The sauce, quite like that too. What I don't like is the vanilla. Personal taste, maybe. I'm just not a great fan of vanilla through pasta puree. But in saying that, he's one happy ponta. It is a good dish. Cooked well. I like your thought process. There's a lot of techniques going on there. The parsnip puree, I totally agree with Monica. Vanilla shouldn't be in the puree. But I think at this stage of the competition, that's a really good dish. Well done. Good job. There you go. Bit more vanilla for me. <laughs> Don't listen to him. <laughs> Quite happy with my dish. 
couple of slight faults to it, but overall, general, very happy. Sam, it's your turn, chef. Leicester-based Sam's dish is brined flat iron beef coated with peanuts, sitting on a blue cheese broccoli puree, served with charred broccoli, broccoli stem noodles, and topped with grated blue cheese and borage flowers. I hope it tastes better than it looks. The beef has a texture of being slightly on the dry side. Because it is a working joint, you've got to give it a little bit more attention. The peanuts are a very unusual addition. The puree underneath is OK. It's a fascinating combination, peanuts, blue cheese and a piece of beef. It's not one I've come across before, and it's not one that works for me personally. Um, no. I know you said it was a classic taste on Asian flavours, but I've not enjoyed eating this dish. I don't find it in any way unpleasant. I could eat the whole lot. It is, however, highly unusual. I've never eaten anything like it. OK, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I'm gutted. I'm trying to bring something a bit different, a bit new. Maybe I should have gone with something I know and I, I love. Cardiff head chef Mark has made stuffed saddler rabbit wrapped in Serrano ham with a rabbit and black pudding croquette and a potato parsley puree garnished with garlic flowers, mushrooms and micro herbs and served with a rabbit sauce. It's almost impossible to conquer all of the mountains you've tried to climb. The rabbit is overcooked and dry. The ham around the outside doesn't complement it because it hasn't got much moisture to it at all. The puree is a little bit stodgy for me. I think the croquette is just average. The best bit of this dish is probably the sauce, albeit even that lacks a little bit of flavour. You put yourself under a huge amount of pressure in just one hour of cookery. I agree. Mark, for me, I, I'm really disappointed, you know, for you. The saddle of rabbit, it's overcooked, so much so that the offal in the middle is overcooked. The bright green puree needs to be creamy and, and rich. You wanted to really impress, but impress us the right way. From the first mouthful, I thought, something's not right, something's missing, yet it looks like a beautiful dish. It's that dangerous thing about chefs, is they never know when enough is enough. When do you say stop on a dish? That's the hard part. I try to pull off too much in such a short amount of time. I think the execution on the flavours, the execution on how it was done, could have been done a bit better. Sven, up you come. Finally, sous chef Sven has made turbot poached in seaweed butter and topped with purslane. Served with cauliflower puree, pickled cauliflower, a cauliflower and hazelnut crumb, and an oyster sauce. Sven, I think that's knockout. Just by watching the way you work, we all knew this was going to be a good dish. The fish tastes divine. The sauce is even better. Everything along the garnish is beautifully executed. The puree is smooth. The cauliflower is pickled. I think it's a fantastic dish. I think it's a very, 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 very good dish, and I don't say that often. Well done. I was looking forward to trying your dish, and I'm really happy with what you've achieved here. The fish is not overcooked, still really moist. You can taste the oyster that goes through the sauce. I'd happily finish the rest of this plate. I love that meaty fish. Beautiful flavours, beautiful textures. Mate, you have got to be over the moon with this. Yes, definitely. Amazing. Well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> He's a good lad, isn't he? Yeah. He is a good lad. 
It was amazing feedback. I didn't expect anything like that. I was shaking when they were telling me, so it was great to hear feedback from those people. So it was amazing. So what do you think about the standard today? It was good. That was a good day. I mean, this could have been an absolute disaster. Some good cooking. Yeah, and some good cooks. Sven's dish was delicious, and it just looked and tasted refined. The flavours he added into the fish were excellent. He made the fish better, and that takes some doing with turbot, because it is a top, top, top fish. I liked a lot of what John had going on, on the plate, bar the vanilla and then the cabbage was a bit sweet. Have you seen enough good stuff from John today? Yes, I have. I think John has cooked well today. I don't know what to make of Jamie. I love the base of his dish. I like the way he cooked the fish. I've got no idea what the asparagus spears or the asparagus foam was doing on that dish. He did have flavour in there. He just put a little bit too much onto the plate. Like, honestly, I really want to get through to the next round. Who doesn't? I haven't come here to lose, so, you know, I want to stay. Am I the only one of the three that liked Sam? I thought it was a very attractive, different-looking dish. I thought it was clever. I thought the blue flowers really shone out. I wasn't a fan of Sam's dish. He was confident. He was saying that the flavours were what's going to get him through today. But I think he could have done so much more. I chose this over another dish and... I'll probably be kicking myself if I go home because of this. What about Mark, the Welsh boy from Spain? He tried to really go for it today and gave himself too much work. He has a great deal of knowledge and some great technique. He just hasn't got the understanding of when to say stop. I want to get through. That's why I'm here. I want to stay. It'll be a right uh, low blow to go home now. Exciting round, I will say, and some good cookery. Some people are overambitious. Some may be not ambitious enough. Yes, but there is one that I think has to go home today. I've had a fantastic day today uh, and some really good food. But, as you know, somebody has to go home. The chef that is leaving us is... Gut is, I'm better than that, and I know I am, but I've not shown you today, and that's my own fault. I'm still going to do what I do, so. Well done, you four. You've done very well. Very well. What comes next is really, really going to test you. We've got four of them left. What are you going to get them to do? Today, Greg, I would like them to prepare this woodcock ready for roasting. Classically, how do you serve a woodcock? Well, classically, Greg, once you've plucked it, trimmed the wings and the feet, you leave the head on and serve it with the head and the innards intact. And that's how we've prepared and cooked it for hundreds and hundreds of years. 20 minutes, good old woodcock, off you go. I want to see them starting at the breast of the bird. To pluck the bird, you must be very careful and take your time with it. And don't rip the skin. Exactly. It's a small bird. You don't want to damage the breast meat or tear it in any way. These birds are shot, so there's going to be some damage to it, and you don't want to cause any more to it. This is really time consuming. We've given them 20 minutes, but I would rather they took their time, treated it with respect, they give us a properly prepared bird instead of one that's absolutely been ripped to shreds. Do you know, it's a fair chance that our chefs will have never done this. And then off with the wings. And trim the feet. Now what? We want to singe off feathers that are stuck to the bird. 
So you're just burning the last stubborn feathers off? Yeah, you can see that, tidying it up. With the head on, you don't need to tie the bird. You use its beak to then push through, and that's what holds it. There we have it, Greg, classically prepared woodcock, ready for roasting. The innards should always stay inside, is that right? That's right. Very difficult, this, because our chefs are going to have to be fast and delicate. Let's hope they do this beautiful bird justice. First up is Edinburgh chef John, who showed good technique with his signature dish. The skills test seems daunting. You don't know what you're going to do. Monica's standards are very high, so she's not going to settle for second best. That on the bench is a woodcock. We would like you to classically prepare it ready for roasting. Have you ever dealt with a woodcock before? Never, no. Have you ever prepared any game bird? I am not. No. Oh. Good luck then. You've got 20 minutes to deal with that woodcock. Off you go. <laughs> Tell me the process you're going through here. Try to take all the feathers off, get cleaned up and tie up. When you put it in the bowl, the feather sticks to it again. Any other way of getting rid of the last little bits? All right, all right. You've had eight minutes now. What are you doing now, John? Just tying the legs together. Are you all done? Yeah, that's me, yeah. John, we gave you 20 minutes. You did that in 10. I know you were nervous. It clearly showed, and when you're tearing the feathers away like you are, you damage the breast like this. Unfortunately, you went in and snipped the head off. It's not the best looking woodcock. I couldn't actually serve this as a whole bird, but I could still use it, taking the breast and, and the legs off. Actually, you know, apart from the rip skin on the breast, not bad at all from a chef who was so nervous he could hardly put his apron on. John, thank you very no much. Problem. Thank you very much, thank you. That's not bad, actually, from a fellow who's actually never handled a game bird before. As soon as I walked in and thought going through my head is, I've never done it before. It's quite challenging. Now it's done, so I'm quite glad. Um, it's out of the way. Cardiff head chef Mark was overambitious with his signature dish and narrowly made it through to the skills test. Uh, it's amazing to get through the first test, although a bit disappointed in myself that I tried to take on too much. It's exciting to know I'm going to be doing one of those skill tests. I'm an all-round kind of chef. I study a lot of background, so hopefully I will know what's on that table. That is a woodcock. Have you handled a woodcock before? I haven't handled uh, this bird before. What have you done that's familiar? Pheasants. Excellent. Well, treat it in a similar way, but... I'd like it classically prepared for classically. roasting. Classically. Okay? Okay. You've got 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Off you go. You've had five minutes, Mark.
Frau Chef. I like the fact that you've trimmed the legs down and still left them quite long. My main disappointment here is the way you've snapped the wings off. It's not necessary to give the bird a shower. This one I would have to cook and maybe carve from the kitchen to send out because normally we send with the head. But you took your time um, and tried to, to inflict as less damage as possible. Not a bad round, not a bad round. Mark, thank you very much. Thank you. Off you go, mate. Not bad at all. No. Not bad no. at all. But if they all manage to do it with a certain level of competency, we've learnt nothing. I was happy with the results. It wasn't like the 100% the classical way that I should have done it, but um, I was happy with what I'd done. Next up is 23-year-old head chef Jamie, whose potato risotto dish showed originality. Apron on. Yeah. When I think about Monica's skills test, I just think hell, basically. You could literally get anything thrown at you. I'm just going to go out there and just give it everything I've got. Jamie, have you by chance handled a woodcock before? No. How about any game birds? Yeah. Which ones? Pheasants, things like that. Have you prepared them with their feathers on? No. Before? Yeah, they ah. come in done. Do they? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You got 20 minutes. Off you go. Roast him whole. Right, okay. I don't know how to get the goats out of the middle. Normally people tend to take it out the back end. Right, okay. Some people leave them in. Right. I wouldn't leave them in, do I? Do what you think you need to do. Right? Okay, yeah. I should have left it. Legs, but I didn't. I'm just going to leave it like that. We gave you 20 minutes. You completed the task in seven. Right. I would like you to take your time with it and treat the woodcock with respect. You've yanked the wings off. I've never seen that happen. I was quite afraid that you were going to yank the head off next. Trying to, to cut down the middle to get the innards out of the bird is really bizarre. I could never serve that. I think the lesson there is take your time. Yeah. Off you go, mate. Thank you. Cheers. He hacked at that, didn't he? Ripped it apart. Bit disappointing. Having Monica stood over me watching everything I do is just too much. <laughs> just too much pressure. She wasn't happy. <laughs> yeah. Finally, it's Sue Chef Sven, whose seaweed poached turbot was the star signature dish. There's no relaxing here. As soon as you get into the kitchen, there's such an amount of pressure. Just want to get going now. Really nervous. Hopefully, it's something I've done before. Sven, have you prepared a woodcock before? Not from this stage, no. Any game birds with the feathers on? No. Oh, wow. 20 minutes. You and that bird, off you go. You have cooked a woodcock before? I have, yes, okay. yeah. Quite a few times. Sven, four minutes gone. We've had seven minutes. You're halfway. You're doing well. Would you like to do another 20? Definitely not. Yours has really been through the ring, hasn't it? The way it's been shot, the neck's broken <laughs> through the breast and the leg.
five minutes left. Are you done? I think so. <laughs> You've done just about everything right. Left the innards in, tuck the head on the side. I really admire the respect you've used to prepare the bird. The bird was shot through the breast, so this is very hard to keep it intact, but you've done your best, you know, I could still use that. Well done, I'm liking you more and more. Thank you. You're having quite a good start to this competition. Can you keep it going? I'm gonna do my best, lots of hard work. Well done, off you go. Thank you. He's a good lad, isn't he? He's the real deal. Very good. Very good. Just needs to keep it going. Yeah, let's hope he can. It was something I've worked with before, so I knew how to treat it. I think I produced something that was OK. Yeah, I'm very happy. That was a good skills test. I think it wasn't a bad effort, considering the majority of these chefs have never plucked a bird. The best one by far is Sven. The one who's got a bit of catching up to do is Jamie. I can't wait to see what Marcus gets them to do next. Marcus Waring was one of the youngest chefs in the country to win a Michelin star. The second came soon after. To get a Michelin star when you're 25 is just insane. That takes some serious hard work. Um, and a, a lot of dedication. Some of his most acclaimed dishes have been inspired by his childhood. The egg custard tart is what I'm cooking today. This is my grandmother's recipe, but I remember my mother's more. Fortunately, it never lasted very long. There were six of us in our house, so it went pretty quick. This is also the dessert I cooked for the Queen on her 80th birthday. The way I look at it, there's only three things. There's a the pastry case, there's the custard itself, and the nutmeg. For the tart base, Marcus takes short crust pastry, which is rested and ready for rolling. Always with rolling. Just very, very gently, hardly any pressure at all. Key to pastry is as little handling as possible, especially when you're using a short pastry like this. Slowly drop the pastry over the top of the ring. Now, time is of the essence because it's going to start to melt on you. You do need to get it into the corners. Because this is something I was taught at college, and it's taking the pastry and just pushing the pastry into the corners. And as you can see, what's happened is my pastry has gone from a ball and it now has a right angle. That there is going to create that perfect right angle tart. OK, the next stage is to line this with cling film and rice and blind bake. And by using rice, it goes right into those corners. It's very important. He next puts the case in the oven for 25 minutes until it's well cooked. The reason why I want the pastry case really well cooked is so that it can support the liquid, and the liquid just doesn't come pouring out. OK, take out the rice. You see, it comes out in one go. So now I'm going to take an egg yolk, and I'm just going to brush the inside to prevent the custard from leaking through. While that's in the oven, I'm then going to go make the custard. For the custard filling, Marcus mixes caster sugar, egg yolks and warmed cream. We pass it through the sieve to make sure that there's no lumps from the egg. And if you taste that with a spoon, I guarantee you'll probably drink quite a bit of it. It is a lovely flavour. It's very comforting, almost sort of childlike in a way, something you remember when you were a kid. So this is the point of no return. And that's about as much as we can go. Now, nutmeg, and we're going to sieve it on top, like so. And you can smell the aroma. It's amazing. We now close the oven door and let it cook slowly. After cooking for 25 minutes, the tart is left to cool for around two hours. Now, time to take off the ring. I think Grandma would be proud of that. OK, you want to do a little slice? I 
and you're looking for that beautiful wobble. Here's some fresh nutmeg. And there we go. Egg custard tart, grandma's way. This is an invention test, and in front of you is some rested short crust pastry. What we want from you is a tart. Chefs, beside us is an amazing array of ingredients. We've got some plums, we've got blackberries, we've got raspberries, we've got spices, we've even got pumpkin. We've got everything here. I want you to come up with a tart that can rival the tart I made for the Queen. This is your last chance to impress before the decision is made on who stays and who goes. You've got 10 minutes to choose your ingredients. Up you come. I'm going to try something I haven't done. I know that's a bit of a risk, but I'm going to try it. Normally go by recipes, so a bit challenging, but I'll try my best and see what I can come up with. I study pastry, so I'm just gonna see what I can put together with what I got. I spent a while doing pastry and I'm comfortable cooking a tart. I have a vision in my head what it's gonna come out like and hopefully it'll come out like the picture in here. One hour, one wonderful tart. Off you go. It's such a privilege to cook for Marcus. After the first round, he's going to maybe be expecting something at the same level, but with no practice, no rehearsal. I have no idea how it's going to go. Just need to not let the pressures get to me. Sven, pastry day, what are you doing? I'm doing a pear and hazelnut frangipan tart with Calvados creme fraiche. What reaction do you want from us? I want you to tell me it's delicious. <laughs> that's all, I want to make something that's delicious. So. How do you feel about pastry as a whole? I love pastry. I spent a lot of time in there in the kitchen. It's one of my favourite things to do. It's okay. kind of more like a craft, so I love having a product at the end you can see that's yeah. finished, that you can be proud of. What's at stake right now? I put a lot of effort in, so if I put this effort in and I don't get through, then I'll be gutted. I hope you do this well. I tell you why, I want to eat it. He rolled his pastry beautifully well. A pair of frangipan, love it, it does work. I want to have a little bit of sharpness cutting through the sweetness. Crème fraîche with that little hint of brandy. Wow. I'm really determined today to really demonstrate my skills and abilities. I'm going to give it my everything. I'm going in there confident that I'm going to be in the quarterfinals. Mark, hey there, pastry, Ed. what are we doing? Like a lemon custard yep. tart. A bit of loud berries running through it. I'm going to serve it with a very light, not too overpowering custard. Are we doing a large one or a small no, one? No, I'm doing small individual ones. After the first round, I'm going to take your advice and not do too much. So I just want to deliver on flavour, make yeah. it nice. What's at stake here for you, Mark? Everything. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to, to get through the competition. Get to it. Yes, thank you. Mark's doing individual pastry cases. I would advise any chef, if you're going to line a small pastry case, line it with the rice. I love the idea of the cooked custard. There is the danger of whether or not Mark can get this custard set in time. If he's going to be doing a light custard, it's going to take longer to cook and it's going to take longer to set. If he puts a few more eggs in, it will set quicker, it will be richer and it can still be served lightly warm. You are halfway. You've got 30 minutes left. It's very inspirational and privileged as well to cook for Marcus. It's quite hard to set your nerves down. 
I'm going to be a lot more focused. And hopefully I can show them what I'm capable of. What's your tart? It's rhubarb, white chocolate with toasted almonds, raspberry puree and cream, some cream fresh on the side. Are you doing anything with it? Are you going to be adding anything to I the cream fresh? The cream fresh is um, will cut, will cut through all the sweetness of the tart right. and give a nice balance. John, have you ever worked in the pastry section? It's not really my, not really my strong point I and mean, I've not done a tart in a while, to be honest. Hopefully I can impress you two and hopefully you enjoy it. John looks a little bit out of his comfort zone. I'm not sure whether John really has an idea of what he's doing at the moment. He's got tart case lined with greaseproof paper, then the pastry. It's probably the other way around. When he lifted the beans out, you could see all the big dents all going through. That's not what you're looking for. The tart should be perfectly flat. I'd like to think that I'm a strong all-rounder, really, in the kitchen. I've had to do it all, so, yeah, I enjoy pastry. Just don't want to go home at all, so I'm going to go in there and give it everything. Tell me, Jamie, what are you making for I'm us? I'm making a... It's a tonka bean and white chocolate tart, a little bit of lemon in an egg custard mix, a raspberry foam, a raspberry kiwi and candied pecans. Whoa! Yeah. Busy, busy boy. Yeah. The bit that got me there was the egg custard bit. I use my egg custard mix and yeah. then infuse it with tonka beans. Right, so this is not going to be cooked in the oven? No. This is going to be poured in and it's going to set? It will, they're small tarts. And if the blast should are set to frozen, it will set. OK. Well, I love the sound of the ingredients and I love the flavours. Yeah. Uh, and I just hope it sets for you. Wow, Jamie is absolutely going for it. He realises now it's all or nothing, it's do or die, and he's throwing everything he's got at it. Love the idea of the custard and the tonka bean. Tonka bean is a very delicate flavour. You've got to be very careful of how much you use it. It's almost like a perfume. Jamie's cooking his custard on the top, and he wants to set it in the blast chiller. I would have personally preferred it to be cooked in the oven. Because in the blast chiller, it's a bit risky because it may not set. Chefs, five minutes left. Last two minutes. Stop! First up is Jamie, whose tart contains white chocolate and tonka bean set custard. Served on a raspberry coulis with candied pecans and raspberry foam. Oh, I say. Oh. Happy, Jamie? Happy, well, yeah. Why have you got that grill on your face? Just, I wish I would have had a little bit longer for it to set. Ah. Uh, yeah. If that's cold and it hasn't set, then it's never going to set. Oh. It's such a shame because the flavour of the tonka bean and the combination with the white chocolate Really has a really good flavour. I think you've got the balance perfectly right. The foam around the outside has a really lovely raspberry flavour. It's really good. And I like the nuts that you've uh, caramelised on the outside. Pastry is a little bit on the thick side. If it had set, you'd have been onto a, a winner there. Beautiful, beautiful flavours. But it's not a tart anymore, it's a puddle. It's a very well flavoured puddle. Mm. But a puddle nonetheless. Ah! <laughs> ah! You know, an hour to make a tart and set is not easy, so, yeah. Feeling a bit disappointed because my tart didn't actually set. John has made a rhubarb and white chocolate custard tart, topped with toasted almonds, served with raspberry puree, creme fraiche and raspberry coulis.
That's a shame. Unfortunately, it's not set. All I'm tasting is just the almonds on top. I'm not getting any flavour of the custard. I'm getting a big hit of rhubarb at the bottom. The white chocolate doesn't come through. The pastry, if you can see, it's slightly raw there. The creme fraiche on the side, did you do it? You just took that from the pot, didn't you? Yeah. Just, just straight onto the plate? Yeah. It doesn't bring anything to the dish at all. Pastry is all about precision, John. I think you chose the right ingredients. Mm. You know, rhubarb, white chocolate and almonds should have been lovely. But it's very sharp with the rhubarb and then it's sour with the creme fraiche. Pastry is not your thing, mate, is it? Probably mm. one of the worst invention tests we could have given you. Yeah, probably. I'm just disappointed. Should have spent more time on the tart case and executed it a lot better. Mark's tart is filled with lemon custard and berries, sitting on berry puree, and served with an almond and caramel shard and tonka bean creme anglaise. Your tart hasn't set, but uh, you're not the only one. It's such a shame because the pastry is really good and it has a, a lovely melting texture on your palate. What I think has happened here is that the fruit have slightly bled and diluted your mixture, which I think has prevented it from setting. Mm -hmm. Of course. I think you've got great presentation. I think you've got nice ideas, nice pastry. Disappointed by the flavour of the tart itself, though. Hint of lemon, hint of tonka. You know, you don't order a tart because you want a hint, you want a smack. I just think, again, the execution wasn't how it should have been. Hopefully it's enough to get me through to the next round. Finally, it's Sven, who's chosen to make a large pear and frangipan tart with Calvados creme fraiche. As you can see, raw and undercooked underneath as well. The timing is an issue here, isn't it? Yep. First of all, you took an amazing risk by doing the whole tart, and I admire that, that you took on the challenge. Timing just got the better of you. But having said that, you've actually lined the tart beautifully well. I think the tart case is cooked well. I think the flavour's fantastic. I love the pear. You took a big challenge here, Sven, and it hasn't quite paid off for you, because there are errors in here, but a good effort nonetheless. It's not set in the middle, but I think it's delicious. You've got that mild nuttiness from the frangipan. You've got the juice from the pear. That's soft. The pastry is nice. I really, really wish it had set in the middle. I just mucked up my timings. It could have come out beautifully. It could have been really good and tasty, but I'm so very disappointed. It's been an interesting day, a difficult challenge, and we had some great ideas and some disasters, to be fair. Wow. Mm. So, was there anyone that actually stood out from the four that we had, though? Sven stood out. His idea was good. I love the fact he challenged himself to make a large tart. But Sven didn't get it spot on today. I think Sven will be kicking himself. I am glad that Sven is the name that you've mentioned. The woodcock. He took his time and he was also the only one that knew you had to turn the head to hold the legs together. You know, that made my day. I do think Sven is certainly one to watch. Mark's skills test, he did OK, and he was quite careful with, with Plucky the Bird. Shows me, you know, a, a level of care. His tart wasn't fully set. He knew exactly what he wanted to do, but he just didn't have the technique to pull it off. As a chef, I think he's got potential, but I think he needs to really raise his game. I hope I don't have to go through it. I hope they can see the potential in me. If I did get through the quarterfinals, it would be amazing. John today was a nervous wreck. It's such a shame because his venison dish I really enjoyed. It had a good flavour to it. And today, it was a bit of a letdown. The whole thing didn't have much flavour. And on his test with me, he did OK. I've seen much worse. Is he a good cook? Do you know what, Monica? I don't know, to be honest with you. I sort of, the jury's out with John. Disappointed if I was to leave at this stage. I wanted to stay in the competition. Just wish I could have done better, to be honest. Tell me about Jamie. How was he for you today? It almost felt like it was his last chance saloon. Unfortunately, with the skills test, the first thing that Jamie did was rip the wings off the bird. I have never, ever seen that in the kitchen before. The tart, the flavours were good. 
but it was a puddle on the plate. Probably in danger of going home. But, you know, I definitely want to stay and get another opportunity. Let's just hope. <laughs> so it sounds like it's between John and Jamie. What do you think? It's a tough one, Monica. Today has been a really difficult challenge. And, to be fair, there's been errors all over the kitchen today. But I think what I will say to you all is that there is potential there. And that is exactly what we're looking for. Unfortunately, one of you is going to leave us. The chef that is leaving us today is... John. Sorry, John. Disappointed. Today I just let myself down, so a bit guided. I wish I could have got a bit further. Well done, guys. Congratulations. You're now through to the quarterfinals. I'm absolutely made up, you know, to get to the quarterfinals of MasterChef at 23. Quite good going, I'd say. Over the moon. On cloud nine is, uh, is amazing. It's great to be through to the quarterfinals. It's a massive privilege to be here. So happy now, big relief. Next time, five more chefs will battle it out to impress the judges. Like a bit of vegetable, you batter chef, please. <laughs> Love it. Only the best will remain in the competition. I'm worried. I'm not. I'm going to have to get you an ambulance, mate.